Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's episode, we will do fundamental analysis of Edelweiss Financial Service Limited. First, we will understand its business. Then we will analyze its financial performance. And at the end, I'll share my personal opinion with respect to this particular company. So without any further ado, let's get started. EFSL that is Edelweiss Financial Service Limited is a financial service company which provides wide variety of financial services to its clients and users. The financial services can be classified into five main categories. These are asset management, asset reconstruction, insurance, wealth management and credit business. So Edelweiss company manages all these businesses through its various subsidiaries. Separate subsidiaries have been set up to manage each of these businesses. Some subsidiaries are fully managed and some are partnership managed. Asset management and credit business are fully managed by Edelweiss company and remaining that is asset reconstruction, wealth management and insurance business are partly managed. Now let's decode each of these subsidiaries so that we get a clearer picture of how business are performing. So let's start off with the asset management business. In asset management business, the company manages funds of its clients by investing it in various asset classes through various mutual fund schemes and alternatives. Alternatives here means pension funds and other kind of schemes. The net worth of this business is 313 crore and Edelweiss holds 100% stake in this business. Now coming to the performance, the company manages around 85,000 crores in this business. The revenue generated in the financial year 2021 from this business is 295 crore and profit is 19 crore. Year on year, the asset under management is growing. In financial year 2020, the company managed 28,000 crore and in 2021, it managed 85,000 crore. So this is a good sign and a positive signal for investors to consider here. Asset management is a tiny portion of the overall Edelweiss group, but certainly this has a very high potential going forward as Indian mutual fund industry is tremendously growing year on year. Now let's move on to its asset reconstruction business. Let's first understand the business. So in asset reconstruction business, the company that is Edelweiss company buys bad loans from banks and other financial institutions and then they take special measures to recover the money. If Edelweiss is able to recover the money, then they make profit or else they make loss. So this is a basic understanding of how an asset reconstruction company works. Edelweiss manages this business through its subsidiary, which goes by the name Edelweiss Asset Reconstruction Company. In this subsidiary, Edelweiss holds 60% of the stake and the rest of the stake is held by other entities. Now coming to the numbers, in financial year 2021, this subsidiary generated a revenue of 342 crores and a profit of 186 crores. Presently, this subsidiary is worth of rupees 2200 crore. Now moving on to the next business that is insurance business. Here, Edelweiss is involved in life insurance and general insurance. In life insurance segment, it holds around 51% stake and in general insurance subsidiary, it holds around 100% stake. The net worth of life insurance business is 536 crore and general insurance business is 119 crore. Coming to the solvency ratio, solvency ratio tells us how strong the insurance business is, how much capable the company is in making the settlements. Higher the solvency ratio, stronger the company's profile. The solvency ratio of life insurance business is 2.15 and general insurance business is 2.09. These numbers are good if we compare it with industrial requirement. Presently, in India, an insurance company has to maintain at least 1.5 solvency ratio. So if we compare Edelweiss solvency ratio with industrial requirement, then this is a good number. So this is a positive signal for investors to consider here. Now coming to the profits, in financial year 2021, life insurance subsidiary made a loss of 206 crores and general insurance subsidiary made a loss of 91 crore. The main reason for this loss is COVID and COVID related issues. Due to health crisis and bad economic conditions, in financial year 2021, this business faced losses. If we compare this with the other peers, then they also have occurred losses. So this should not be very much concerning. Now moving on to the fourth business that is wealth management. Here the company acts as an advisory entity and provides solution to HNIs, ultra HNIs and institutions in managing and growing their wealth. 
Currently, Edelweiss holds 38.5 percent stake in its wealth management subsidiary. Coming to the numbers, the net worth of this business is 1,560 crores. The revenue generated from this business in financial year 2021 is 1,280 crores, and profit is 245 crore. Year on year, revenues and profits are growing in this business, so this is a good sign for investors to consider here. Now moving on to the last and the main business, which is Great Business. Great Business is the most important business for Edelweiss Company because this is a huge business and company manages large amount of funds in this business, and Edelweiss Group derives half of its net worth from this business. Coming to its business here, the company gives corporate loans. MSME loans, SMEs loans, house loans, and other kind of loans. Generally speaking, there are three main categories in this business: corporate banking, retail banking, and housing finance. If we see the loan book, the loan book of this business is approximately fourteen thousand crores. Now, if we compare this with its previous year loan book, then we see that from two thousand nineteen, the loan book has drastically decreased. In financial year twenty nineteen, the loan book was forty three thousand five hundred crores. And in financial year 2021, the loan book is only 14,000 crores. So the company is aggressively reducing its loan book size. Loan book basically tells us how much loans the company has given. Now the next question which arises here is why is the company doing such a dumb thing that is reducing its loan book year on year? Now to understand this, we need to go through the events which occurred in 2018. In 2018, Ireland FS crisis happened. DHFL defaulted and many other infrastructure companies collapsed in that year. Edelweiss had a very large exposure to these companies and when the infra companies started to default, Edelweiss lost lots and lots of money. So after this event, Edelweiss started to slash out its corporate loan book. This in turn resulted the loan book to shrink. From financial year 2019 to financial year 2021, the corporate loan book has fallen from 18000 crores to 7200 crores which is a kind of a good thing because corporate lending is a riskier business at the present moment a single default will damage the overall book so we can say that the company's vision in bringing down the corporate loan book is a good thing and a positive signal for investors but the other important thing what we need to notice here is from 2019 along with the corporate loan book the retail and housing loan book has also drastically fallen in 2019 The book was eighteen thousand crore, and presently the retail and housing book is only six thousand eight hundred crore. Surely this is not a good thing for companies and for investors to consider here, because retail banking is the one which is more stable and less riskier one. But we see that Adelweiss is going in a wrong direction. It is year on year reducing its retail book, which is certainly not a good thing for investors to consider here. I assume Adelweiss is cutting out riskier loans and unsecured loans from its retail book. Meanwhile, the company should also add proportionate amount of clients to its retail book so that the book is balanced. But I don't see anything happening like that. Now coming to the credit quality, again this is also not in a good shape as NPS are increasing year on year, quarter on quarter. So again this is also a bad signal for investors to consider here. Now coming to the borrowing side, This company borrows the money from banks at an average interest rate of 10%, which is very high if we compare it with its peers like Bajaj Finance and Muthut Finance. So again, this is also a bad signal. Now, if we try to draw an overall picture of all its businesses, then we see that asset management, wealth management, insurance business, and asset reconstruction business are doing good, whereas credit business is doing bad at the present moment. Now, in this section, let's analyze. company's overall financial performance let's start off with the revenue analysis if we see the revenues from financial year 2017 they have grown but from financial year 2019 the revenues are falling so this is a bad signal coming to the profits the profits are also falling year on year so again this is a bad sign the company's roe that is return on equity is 4% which is again not a good number coming to its valuation the stock of edelweiss is currently trading at rupees 80 The PE ratio is 13.5 and book value per share is 73. So valuation wise the stock looks to be cheaper and attractive and this is a best opportunity for people who are thinking to invest in this stock. Now coming to its shareholding pattern presently 32.85% stake is held by promoters 
29.85% is held by FIS, 4.52% is held by DIS, 27.97% is held by public and rest that is 4.81% is held by other entities. So public is holding more than 20% and promoters are holding less than 35%. I personally like the companies in which public holding is less than 20%. So pattern wise again this is not a good signal. I am currently holding a neutral view on this stock. The reason for this is I am still not clear on how this company will grow its retail business going forward. And also the company still has a significant number of infrastructure loan in its loan book. So presently I am neutral on this stock. So this is my personal opinion. Please don't consider this as a direct investment advice. Please do your own research and analysis before investing in any companies. Having said that, I conclude my today's episode. If you enjoyed this episode, then hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching the video.